perhaps some, if not uh, many of you will recall the, the fact that the idea of a joined up European foreign policy uh, has been a sort of light motif in, in European foreign policy debates for quite some time. It was heralded as one of the goals uh, of, uh, of the EU global strategy. Uh, and it has been, in a sense, it's, it's, it's really a notion that has been, you know, um, interpreted through different words and, uh, uh, and, and practices over the years, but really the idea of having greater consistency, greater coherence, uh, ensuring that the way in which Europe acts uh, is indeed more joined up has really been a constant over the decades uh, in, in the way in which uh, Europe has tried to understand itself and its role in the world. Now, obviously, this depends to a large extent on the way in which the EU is organized internally, relations between uh, member states, relations between institutions, so the extent to which uh, the EU both vertically, horizontally, in fact, diagonally, in whatever direction you, you may, uh, it really is able to break uh, many of the silos uh, that uh, really compartmentalize different forms of action and therefore impede the emergence of a coherent foreign policy. But then, of course, it, this also depends on the way in which the EU uh, interacts uh, with the wider world. And uh, uh, some uh, of the actors that we're talking about are, of course, friends, uh, their uh, partners and, and allies. Uh, other countries, perhaps slightly less so. And yes, and yet we know that we are living in, and we will be living in, uh, a world in which uh, power is increasingly distributed, if you like, redistributed uh, amongst different uh, power centers. And therefore, uh, if the EU is indeed to be a, a more joined up actor in the world, uh, there is also a big question which surrounds the way in which uh, it acts with or against uh, uh, other actors in the world and the way in which it is perceived as being a coherent and joined up actor.